Welcome as we continue our journey through the book of Revelation. We are now approaching Revelation 15, leading up to the seven bowls. Remember, Revelation 1, verse 19, Jesus said, Write what you have seen, what is going on now, and what is to come. So a quick review is that we're looking at the past, the present, and the future tense of this book. The first portion, which was the first four verses, is the vision of the Lord to John on the island of Patmos. He had to write down things he has seen. Second portion was the things which are. Chapters 2 to 3, these are messages to the seven churches that existed then, but the message is relevant for every church. There is always a message to the overcomers. To all of these churches, these are personal report cards from Jesus himself. It would be in order to say that these churches have represented every church then and every church to come, each having its own challenges and outcomes. Remember, seven means complete. We'll come back to that. We're continuing in the things which are to come. We have looked at the seven sealed scrolls, followed by the seven trumpets, which is followed by the seven bowls. There has been an interlude, a filler, if you like, between these subjects. Chapter 14 was a prelude to what we are getting into right now, the seven bowls. So we struggle with judgment. We struggle with God pouring judgment out. We struggle with his wrath. We, we seem to be tenderhearted and say, well, you know, and we feel sorry for them. Well, we've got to look at what choice does God have? Remember, he's outside of time and he is the creator. He could, one, turn a blind eye and evil will take over. There would be no justice. There would be no hope. There would be no salvation. There would be ongoing carnage and everyone would be destroyed. Or two, he could make us all like robots and order us to love him with no free will. But that wouldn't really work. Three, or he could withdraw himself from mankind. Wow, separation from God for eternity. What a disaster that would be. So that leads to the concept of the two deaths. One, the physical death, which we are aware of, the separation of the soul from the body, and two, spiritual death, the separation of the soul from the Spirit of God. Remember when he made man, he breathed the breath of life into him. And the Bible says, and mankind became a living soul. We can't imagine what separation from soul and spirit would be like. So we must choose life or we can choose death. And remember, it's forever. In chapter 15, verse 1, and I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels who had seven plagues, which are the last, because in them the wrath of God is finished. The wrath of God is the tribulation of God, the last seven years of tribulation. Verse 2 continues, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mixed with fire, and those who had come off victorious from the beast and from his image and from the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, holding harps of gold. Here we have these people standing on a sea of glass. What we've got to remember, and, and my mind functions back as we look at the temple plan that God gave Moses. He said, I want you to draw out a tabernacle. These people were standing on water. So what do we have in the tabernacle? What do we have in the temple? What do we have in the heavenlies that's a, that, that, that these things were a copy of it? Well, we see it's going to be the wrath and the tribulation. They're standing on the water. Now, what is the water? Well, the water had fire in it. When you look, when the priests looked at the water, which is in the laver, which was for cleaning themselves, for taking the muck off the face, they, when these people are standing on the water, they would be standing on the water. They'd be standing on the water that's contained in the laver. They would see the, the flames of the fire of the, uh, the burnt uh, altar that's, that's burning behind them. 
And we see that the laver represents the word of God because it's the word that sets us clean. Uh, Paul said in Ephesians 5 verse 26, that be washed by the water of the word. They were standing on the word of God. So those who were standing on the sea of God's word had victory over the beast, over his image, and over his number. In verse, verse 3, And they sang the song of Moses, and the born servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, are thy works, O Lord, the Almighty, righteous and true, are they always the kings of the nations. Verse 3, wow, it's a song of Moses. This song was sung in Exodus. It was sung in Joshua. It was sung in Deuteronomy. It was sung in Psalms. It was sung in Hebrews. It was sung in Revelation. It's the song of victory. Thy works, O Lord, never a word about the achievement of the martyrs. Makes you think. No word about that. It's always about the achievement of Jesus Christ, his achievements through his saints. Anything we do in our account is wasted, but anything we do in response to him is what counts. All the praise and all the worship is about Jesus. Remember, this is the book of Revelation which means the unveiling. So who's being unveiled? Well, Jesus, Yeshua. Salvation is being unveiled, not the Antichrist. Everybody wants to know who the Antichrist is. The book of Revelation is the unveiling of Jesus Christ. Verse 4. Who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou alone art holy. Wow. Who will, who will, you know, it's sad. Here we see who's going to fear you, Lord. Who will fear you? It's sad to see the lack of fear, the lack of reverence today in the world. People just don't take it easy. They, they, they don't take the word of God as if it's real. They, they, they pass it off as some sort of fairy tale. They've sort of diluted the morals of God. The word of God is no longer around. They've taken it out of schools, out of politics. They don't preach it anymore. In fact, they'll put it down as a hate speech. But it's not just the world, but also the church today. The church today seems must be run hard. The people want the, the church to be run. What about love your neighbor? What about allowing the spirit to sort things out? Unfortunately, Ego takes over and pride sets in, just like in the Garden of Eden. And it can block the moving of the Spirit in your own life. Now remember, God won't allow the Spirit to be blocked in his church because the Bible tells us that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. But some believers have to just get over themselves to get right with God. Sometimes we can feel down. I do on occasions. But if you genuinely ask God to lift you up, he does it. He does it in many ways. You get a phone call from someone. You can hear something on the radio or a DVD or you read a text or someone sends you a WhatsApp. And the list just, well, just goes on. The verse says we should fear him, but society today has lost that fear. Society today has lost its moral values. In verse 5, after these things, I looked and the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. The temple was opened. Where? Not the temple on the ground, but the temple in heaven. The temple is mentioned as a matter of interest 15 times in the book of Revelation. It mentions it 15 times, but never mentioned it until after chapter 4. As long as God was dealing with the church on earth, the temple wasn't mentioned. Why? Because God was dwelling with his people. And now the church is no longer on the earth. Now God is dealing with the people who have a temple. You see, the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant that was on earth were only replicas of the real thing. The real Ark is in heaven. Verse 6. 
And the seven angels who had the seven plagues came out of the temple, clothed in linen, clean and bright, and girded around their breasts with golden girdles. Seven angels coming out of the temple in heaven. We read on down to verse 7. And one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls, some of the Bible say vials, and full of the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. Who lives forever and ever. Verse 8, And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no one was able to enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels was finished. Seven angels coming out of the temple. They had the bowls of the wrath of God in their hands. And nothing, no one was able to enter the temple until the seven plagues, until it was finished. Why? Because of the glory of God that was there. It's, it's actually reminiscent of when the priests couldn't minister at Solomon's temple because of the glory of God that it filled it completely. You find this in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 14. Now, in conclusion, it's important for us to know that this judgment is from God. It's not something man has thought up. It's not something that's been brought on by them. It's something that God has done. It's called justice, the wrath of God. Now, earlier we said that the seven churches represented the complete church. So here we see the seven bowls of wrath representing the complete judgment of God. On what? Well, next time we will look at those judgments of God, and it's on the kingdom of the beast. Until we meet again, goodbye for now.